Greetings, it's Doc Griffin, your Swing Surgeon Director of Club Fitting Operations, and it's time again for your doctor's house call. Today we're continuing in our series of club fitting uh, steps and procedures that I go through uh, when working with the client on getting a properly set uh, fit set of equipment. Uh, we're up to today where I would uh, start working on configuration of the set for the person. In other words, what clubs do we put in the bag for the individual so that he has uh, the proper tools to do the job. Um, this part of the uh, fitting is really very simple. Uh, it comes down to this. If you have a sub 90 degree club head speed with a driver, let's say you're in the neighborhood 87, 88, 89, whatever in that area, I don't recommend putting a three wood in the bag. Uh, we take the three wood out and we put a five wood. Now this doesn't mean that the golfer can't hit a three wood. It just means that with his club head speed, he doesn't generate enough speed on the ball with the contact of the head that it spins up the face and launches at the proper launch angle whereby he will get maximum distance. It's not that he doesn't have the physical ability to hit it, it's just that it, the properties of the, the face being more shallow, he doesn't generate enough spin on the ball to get the ball up and flying properly. So a sub 90, I'm going to put him in um, a 5 wood instead of a 3 wood. Uh, you start getting down to sub 80, uh, then we're looking at uh, even possibly not even building a driver, but we could still put a driver in the bag and then probably would go to like a 7 wood perhaps. Um, again, we're looking to get the ball to launch on the proper launch angle uh, so that you maximize your distance. Um, irons. If you're a sub 80 guy with a 38 inch 5 iron, um, I'm probably going to give you a 5 iron replacement hybrid club while you're here letting you hit it and then once you see how much easier it is to hit the hybrid replacement for that 5 iron, you're not even going to want the 5 iron. But 80 is the kind of iffy range for a five iron or not. You some guys with their, their technique um, and the angle of attack can still hit a five iron pretty well, get the launch angle um, uh, at, at 80 miles an hour. Uh, it's still pretty good, but even I've had some of those guys that, that are right on that borderline opt to go with the hybrid because it's so much easier to hit and it does launch the ball higher and further, uh, 85 and above, uh, you can get four iron, you can get three iron. Uh, a lot of people are, though, are starting to realize that hybrids are a good alternative to the long irons. And very rarely do I ever build a three. So um, most of the time we're at least placing, replacing the three iron with a hybrid. Now, how do we replace an iron with a hybrid? Like number to like number. No, three hybrid does not replace three iron. And if you go in most golf stores, that's what they're gonna give you. And that three hybrid is gonna have a whole lot of gap between you, that and your four iron. So you have to look at lofts and then length of shaft. So if we wanna replace a 21 degree three iron with an appropriate hybrid to where that the gapping is staying the same in your yardages, then you're actually going to want to go to like a 24 degree hybrid because the difference in the length of shaft will generate more club head speed, therefore more distance, and you'll keep your gapping quite similar. Um, if your club head speed starts getting down uh, low 70s, we might replace all the way down to the 6 iron. Sub 70, we start replacing seven irons. I have built sets for some folks with uh, a very low club head speed to where we've done just about all hybrids up to like a nine iron or pitching wedge. And again, it's a matter of putting the clubs in the bag 
that are appropriate for the swing. Um, wedges, some people like a gap wedge, some people don't. Uh, if you're getting a 45 degree pitching wedge and then your next club is a 56 degree sand wedge, I think it's pretty necessary, some people don't. And I ask people when they say, no, I don't want a gap wedge, how do you hit the shot that's between those two distances? And if the first thing they say is, I back off of it, then I'll ask them, how well does that work? And of course, the answer is not real well. But there are folks that know how to take a nine iron or a pitching wedge, choke it down two, three, four, five inches, and take a, a full swing or a half swing and make it work as well. But if you're playing clubs generally that have nine to 10 degrees of difference between them in lofts, it is advisable to go ahead and get the gap wedge. Then sand wedge, and then some folks want lob wedge. Folks, let me tell you something. For the average amateur, the lob wedge is the second hardest club in the bag to hit uh, out of 10 shots. You hit four fat, you skull four, you chunk one, and you hit one good maybe oversimplification, but I've actually gone through that drill with people who said, no, I hit a, I hit a lob wedge pretty good. And I said, and I've watched them hit, and I said, no, let me tell you something, out of 10 shots, you hit four fat, you skull four, you chunk one, and you hit one good. And they look at me and go, you know, that's pretty accurate. And I said, well, how can you tell me one out of 10, you play it pretty well? You don't need it in your bag. Take a 56, get a 56 that got the right camber, and heel and toe relief like Don had talked about in uh, a video earlier and, and just lay the thing open. You in essence have created a club with more loft and it would be easier to play. So that's it. How to gap clubs. Basically it's just based off of club head speed. Well, that's it for me for today. Next week, we will continue uh, the club fitting series. There's one more session, and if you think about it, there's one thing that we haven't covered. And I want to say thanks to uh, the handful of people that have been following the club fitting series and participating in the blog. Some of you have, uh, I think, seen uh, and gathered some information that's been helpful, and I appreciate your participation. And until next week, remember, better golf is just a fit away.